Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron. It is Friday morning and wow, we have had a massive, massive bit of news coming out of the football club this morning. Everton released a club statement at around about 10 a.m., so just under half an hour ago, and the statement read, 777 partners have signed an agreement with Farhad Mashiri to acquire his full stake in Everton Football Club, which accounts for 94.1% of the club's shares. So after all of the rumours, after all of the reports, after we'd done the video a couple of days ago, Talking about the reports suggesting that 777 were on the verge of signing Everton. We spoke about how the fact that we'd heard this before and it had always been false thorns. And then things went a little bit quiet for a couple of days. And I was sitting there thinking, yep, just another one of those rumours about somebody being close to buying Everton. You know, when in fact it's actually not happening. Well... It looks like it could be happening this time around. Farhad Mashiri has signed an agreement with 777 Partners to sell his full stake at the football club to 777, meaning Farhad Mashiri will, of course, be moving away from Everton. He has released a statement. Usually, I wouldn't read the full statement because it's quite heavy and it's quite... Um, it's quite a lot, but I feel like this is quite a big bit of information and quite an important piece of news, so I, I feel like it's only right to, f to to read the entire statement out from Farhad Mashiri. Farhad Mashiri has said the nature of ownership and financing of top football clubs has changed immeasurably since I first invested in Everton over seven years ago. The days of an owner slash benefactor are seemingly out of reach for most, and the biggest clubs are now typically owned by well-resourced PE uh, Firms, of course, I, I believe that stands for public investment firms, um, specialist sports investors or state-backed companies and funds. I have been open about the need to bring in new investments and complete the financing for our iconic new stadium at Bramley Moor Docks on the banks of the Mersey. Get that one in there as well. You know, make yourself seem a little bit better than what you actually are. Make yourself seem like you care. Make yourself seem like you love Everton on the banks of the Mersey. You're not fooling anybody. Uh, he then goes on to say, which which I predominantly financed to date. Again, you're not fooling anybody. I have spoken to a number of parties and considered some strong potential opportunities. However, it is through my lengthy discussions with 777 that I believe they are the best partners to take our great club forward with all the benefits of their multi-club investment model. That there in itself, and we'll go on to the next paragraph in a moment, but I do just want to pick little parts of, of this out whilst we're doing this because I think it's important to do so. Firstly... The whole, um, you know, I have been open about the need to bring in investment to finance our new iconic stadium at Bramley Moor Dock on the banks of the Mersey. You're not fooling anybody, mate. You're not an Evertonian. You never have been an Evertonian. You never will be an Evertonian. You don't know what it means to support this fantastic, fantastic football club. Yes, you've been a custodian of this football club. Yes, you have been linked to this football club for the last seven years, but your actions, your words, and your lack of actual involvement in the football Football club has proven that you aren't the Evertonian that you say you are. So don't throw that on the banks of the Royal Blue Mersey and as if you're singing there, singing, you know, that song in your Everton pajamas every night with your Everton calendar watching, you know, Howard's Way on repeat, you know, all night. You're not, we know you're not, you're not bullshitting any of us. So don't try and do it. Another thing which I have predominantly financed to date, hmm, that's incest and a lot of the finance will have been put against the football club. So, you know, has the £400 million pounds that, that has been put into the stadium so far come exactly from Farhad Mashiri's back pocket, I highly doubt that. Secondly, however, it is through my lengthy discussions with 777 that I believe they are the best partners to take our club forward. Wrong. You actually believe that MSP were the best partners to take the football club forward. However, MSP backed away from uh, fully investing or, 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 or fully purchasing your stake in the football club because of various other unpaid loans that would have had to have been covered. So actually, 777 weren't even at the top of the list for people to come in and buy the football club MSP where and when they backed away, you then moved on to 777. So again, we already know 777 weren't the first choice because when MSP was still in the conversation, 777 weren't in the conversation. So again, don't lie to us and say, well, 777 were always the first choice because they weren't. 
and we all know that as a matter of fact. He then goes on to say, as a result of this agreement, we have experienced and well-connected investor, investor in football clubs who will help maximise the commercial opportunities and we have secured the complete financing for our new stadium, which will be, cri- which will be the critical element in the future of the success of Everton. <coughs> um, again, I don't want to call anybody a liar. I don't want to say that anybody is fabricating the truth. I don't want to sit here and say Farhad Mashiri <coughs> is a compulsive liar. However, all I will say is let's wait and see. That's a very clear statement there. We have secured the complete financing for our new stadium. So that means that this stadium should be built. The inside should be perfectly built. The outside should be perfectly built. Everything should be built to open fully next year with no problem whatsoever in terms of finances. Let's wait and see if, if, if that goes as smoothly as he seemingly believes it will. Um, he then says, obviously, which will be cr- the critical element in the future success of Everton. Today is an important next step in the successful development of Everton, and I look forward to closely following as our club goes from strength to strength. Once again, it's not your club, not our club, it's our club. What he should be saying is, as your club goes from strength to strength, not our club, you have pretty much single-handedly with the help of some incredibly um, inexperienced and, uh, you know, incompetent people. You have dragged this football club through the dirt for the last seven years and you have single-handedly put us in a position where financially we're on our arse, uh, on the pitch we're on our arse because we're, we're constantly battling relegation battles. So you don't have the right to call it your football club. Anyway, we move on. Of course, none of this could have been achieved without the hard work of everybody at the club, uh, from our team at the training ground, our commercial and support teams, through to match day employees. I extend my sincerest gratitude. And to our fans, the last few years have been challenging, but you have supported the club through it all and consistently been our 12th man. You are the best fans and deserve success. Again, I appreciate that that's a nice statement. I appreciate that that's nice words, and some people might go, oh, that's a lovely thing to say. The one thing we have been consistent on, the majority of the fan base, is is the consistent push that you and your little friend that has been there for far too long and nowhere near capable of running this football club as you have proven over the last five years specifically and over the, the pretty much the seven years that you've been at this football club. Anyway, that ends what Farhad Mashiri had to say for the moment. Um, <clears throat> The club then go on to talk about 777. It's a global multi-club platform providing access to strategic markets. I'm not going to read all of that because uh, we already know that, you know, the club are going to try and big 777 up. They're going to try and make 777 out to be this massive business empire that we should be absolutely proud to be a part of when we all know the genuine concerns about 777 and what we all should be talking about and looking at and thinking of uh, going into to, to obviously the next few months or so if they are to take over Everton Football club it's not the fact that they are a global multi-club platform providing access to strategic markets it's the fact that a lot of the football clubs that they have ownership in or they have stakes in are in positions at the moment where they are not happy with 777 uh, there's various different things that have happened in the past with 777's uh, owners which i'm not going to go into because it's legal stuff and i don't want to get my ass sued but yeah, again, we all know what's out there. We all know what we're reading on social media. We all know what's being reported. Uh, so th- there's no need to talk about how brilliant the club have said 777 are. Uh, Josh Wonder, who is the founder uh, and managing partner of 777, He has said, we are truly humbled by the opportunity to become part of the Everton family as custodians of the club and consider it a privilege to be able to build on its proud heritage and values. Our primary objective is to work with the fans and stakeholders. Well, that'll be... That'll be something that Mott Farhad Mashiri didn't do for the seven years he was at the football club. He never really worked with the fans. He barely communicated with us through the seven years. Um, is to work with the fans and stakeholders to develop the sporting and commercial infrastructure for the men's and women's teams that will deliver results for future generations of Everton supporters. As part of this, we are committed to partnering with local community over the long term, working on important projects such as the development of Bramley Moor Dock as a world-class stadium venue, allowing thousands more Evertonians to attend our home matches and contribute to the economic and cultural regeneration of Merseyside. All sounds absolutely brilliant. All sounds absolutely fantastic. If you were to read this and not know anything about Josh Wonder or 777, you'd probably say, do you know what? He actually sounds all right. He sounds like he's got his best interests at heart, but he's not going to come in in his first interview with the football club and say, yeah, my main objective is to take as much money as this football club as a, uh, out of this football club as I possibly can, leave you in the absolute shit, and then get off without spending any real money, is he? 
even if that is his true intention, which I'm not saying it is, he ain't going to come out and say it. So, again, I take these things with a massive pinch of salt. This is the biggest paragraph in this entire statement. It's the most important part of this entire situation, and it is the most important, as I said, paragraph in everything that we've read so far this morning. And it goes, Closing of the transaction is expected to occur in the fourth quarter of 2023, so that would be the last three months of 2023, uh, which would be obviously October, uh, November, December, um, and remain subject to regulatory approval, including from the Premier League, <clears throat> the Football Association, the FA, and the Financial Conduct Authority. That there is the most important part of this entire statement. Remains subject to regulatory approval, including the Premier League, the Football Association and the Financial Conduct Authority. Now, <clears throat> there is a lot of evidence out there to suggest that this will not be approved for, for, for numerous reasons. Lack of finances, lack of being able to prove finances from 777's point of view, concerns about the people that are involved with 777 and their past, concerns about how 777 are running the football club that they're currently involved with. There is a lot of discussion points out there that aim towards the fact that despite there's been an agreement, despite the fact that Farhad Mashiri has basically come out and said, I'm off, see you later, this still mightn't go through because it's got to go through the FA, the Premier League and the FCA, Financial Conduct Authority. The FCA are the main one. The Premier League, I wouldn't be surprised if they allowed it to happen. They've allowed um, a lot of, let's say, dubious takeovers to happen uh, in in the past most recently one in the uh, northeast of the country uh, the fa again wouldn't be surprised it's the fca that i think could call a halt on this through 777's funds or lack of funds and therefore <clears throat> their statement stating we have now or farhad mashiri statement stating we have now completely secured the uh what did he say uh we have com we have complete the financing for our uh, iconic new stadium at bramley moor dock can you prove that you have completed the financing for that if not then uh, this could call a halt to the whole situation. Uh, it then goes on to say, out of respect for this process, 777 will not be providing any further comment during this period of regulatory review. Great. <clears throat> They've only been in for 25 minutes and they're already saying we're not going to comment. Uh, Mr. Mishiri will also be seeking support from the club's minority shareholders and will be writing to them in the coming days. Well, about a minute later, we had an open letter from Farhad Mashiri to Everton's shareholders and stakeholders. He said that, uh, Dear shareholders, I am writing regarding my intention to sell my shareholding in Everton to 777 Partners. <coughs> Pardon me. As you are aware from my open letter in July last year, I have been clear about the need to bring in new investments and complete the financing of our iconic new stadium at Bramley Mordock. He may as well have said after that, marching down the Goodison Road. Look at me, I'm a big Evertonian. Do me a favour, mate, you're not sick on anybody. Uh, something that I have predominantly financed to date. Again, you've already said that. The requirement for this has only become more apparent to me as we continue to see rapid changes in the nature of ownership and financing of top football clubs. The last two transfer windows have shown that the days of an owner slash benefiter and seemingly out of reach, we've already said all this, uh, and the biggest clubs are now typically owned by well-resourced PE firms, specialist sports investors, or state-backed companies and funds. Uh, <clears throat> in seeking investments, I've spoken to a number of parties and considered some potential, uh, some strong potential opportunities. However, it's through my lengthy discussions with 777 that I believe they are the best partners to take our club forward with all the benefits of their multi-club investment model. Basically, what has happened here, <clears throat> and I've only just realised this as of reading it, because I'll be honest, I haven't read this full statement beforehand. I've literally just tweeted it out and then jumped on a live. He's basically copy and pasted everything that he'd said previously into his letter to the shareholders. So he hasn't even written a personal letter to the shareholders. He might have put a couple of paragraphs in there added a couple of paragraphs but the majority of this is copied from what he's already said he then goes on to talk about 777 and what they do and who they have etc etc um interestingly enough he says though that group 777 is providing its uh sorry through that group 777 is providing its clubs with access to world-class tools to support their football operations and global commercial opp opportunities where's the proof of that <laughs> 
I would like to see the proof of that because if 777 are providing access to world-class tools to support their football operations and global commercial opportunities, show me the proof. Why are clubs in Belgium protesting to get them out? Why are clubs in Spain massively um, worried about their club's future under 777 if <clears throat> they are providing clubs with access to world-class tools to support football operations? Why would why would these different football clubs be concerned then? He then says, It is my belief that they, that this expertise combined with collective strength of the clubs within the group is what makes 777 the right fit for Everton. Or Farhad, are 777 <clears throat> the only group that were willing to pay you out completely and give you uh, you know, an exit door to run away from with your tail between your legs and walk away from what's been an absolute disaster? He says, I say that knowing our club's future is a positive one. The last few years have not been easy for Evertonians, and I am one of you. It has been tough to watch our struggles on the pitch, yet the foundations for a brighter future have been laid. Uh, in the case of the new stadium, we have made incredible progress over the last two years. We remain on track and on budget. Going forward, Everton will play in a stadium that will be the envy of the Premier League and beyond. A stadium that's location will make it iconic throughout the game. A stadium that, most importantly, will give Everton a tremendous platform for growth and transform North Liverpool and the communities around it. I will be forever proud of what we have achieved. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, I I don't know if you feel the same, but I can just read through this entire letter. I can just see through it. I, it, 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 I can just see through the bullshit. I can just see through the, you know, the, the fabrication of the truth. I can just see through it all. It, I, I don't know who he's trying to trick. I don't know who he's trying to, uh, <clears throat> you know, to, 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 I don't know who his audience is <clears throat> because it's certainly not Evertonians because Evertonians know that the majority of what he's saying is complete bollocks. So is it the wider media? That he wants to trick into believing that he's the greatest thing to happen to Everton since sliced bread. Is it? Is it? Is it his friends? Is it seven seven? Who is it that he's trying to trick here? Because we all know as Blues that the majority of this is complete bollocks. Um, yeah, this is a good bit. He then goes on to say, finally, <coughs> I would like to thank the chairman. Uh, you know that? You know that meme? Have you ever seen that meme? That 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 Simpsons meme, and it's Bart in the class, and um, and he's sitting there. And he's, he's, he's got, like, his pen and his pad, and the whole class are looking at him, and they're sort of... I think it's Bart, and they're sort of saying, say the word, say the word. Say, it obviously comes from an episode. Uh, say the phrase, say the phrase, say the phrase, and the meme is always, like, whatever phrase is, is, is popular at the moment is said, and then the next picture is the whole class going apeshit. That's what this is like, innit? Go on, mention the chairman. Go on, mention the chairman, mention the chairman. Oh, he's mentioned the chairman. What a load of nonsense. Uh, finally, I would like to thank the chairman and those who are acting in interim positions at the club for their commitment during the process to bring new investments and opportunity to the football club. They will continue to provide support and guidance in ensuring the smooth running of the club during the next phase of this process. Smooth running? <clears throat> smooth running? Have we not just had to sell some of our players that start week in, week out for this football club just to run the football club on a day-to-day -day basis? That for me is, is 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 not smooth running in any sense of the word um where were we sorry uh joining the next phase of the process which will include the transaction gaining the required regulatory approval uh from the premier league the fa and the fca i will continue to update on that process as it progresses in due course i will also be writing to the shareholders more formally to ask for your support in the completion of the transaction by the way of a shareholder vote my intention of course will be to vote in favor of this investment one which i have outlined and firmly believe is in the best interest of our club and its future thank you for your ongoing support of this great football club Mr. Farhad Mashiri <sighs> yeah again maybe I'm being harsh maybe I'm you know being a little bit <clears throat> too sort of unfair on Farhad Mashiri but I just don't believe anything that he says I really 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 don't believe anything that he says and uh, like I said for me the most important part of that statement in itself is that second to last paragraph which is almost put right at the end it's like a terms and conditions in it it's like when you see an advert on the telly oh my god come and buy this brand new bike it's you know it costs 45 quid it's unbelievable it's the best bike ever you know you, you're going to enjoy it You'll, it'll be the best thing you've ever bought in your life and then at the end of the advert, it says, terms and conditions apply. The bike is actually £45 a month and you'll end up paying 15 grand for it. That's what this is like, isn't it? It's a whole letter about how... <clears throat> 
we're selling Everton and and, and and you know it's seven 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 are brilliant and this is what they bring that that and the other terms and conditions this is actually subject to approval from the Premier League the FA and the FCA and we'll wait and see what they say yeah I, I, again I would not be surprised either way of, of, of the outcome of this situation I'll be perfectly honest I wouldn't be surprised if this is allowed to go ahead because as I said, we've seen a lot of dubious takeovers over the course of the last 10-15 years that have been allowed to go ahead. Um, the only thing that I think could stop this is the FCA and a lack of proof of 777's finances to be able to take over a football club with hundreds and hundreds of billions of uh, sorry of millions of pounds um, with a stadium that is going to cost close to a billion pounds to complete. I just, <clears throat> yeah, if, if 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 everything that we've been reading on social media and in the news is, is correct, and listen, not everything you read on social media and in the news is correct, but if everything is to be correct, then there's, there's, there's large um, concerns about 777's um, funds and, and finances on such a small scale. I believe they run a, a basketball club and they fail to pay a £900,000 um, payment to, to, to the Basketball Association. And, you know, £900,000, don't get me wrong, is a lot of money. But in terms of a football club in the Premier League in 2023, £900,000 is nothing. So if they can't even fund £900,000, pounds then how are they going to fund several hundreds of millions of pounds to run Everton on a yearly basis I don't know I don't know so we are in a position where this very much still could not happen even though an agreement has taken place however I wouldn't be of the view of that well this will never get left through anyway because you know it, 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 it you know it's it's it, it's quite clear that 777 haven't got the funds there's an agreement in place for 777 to take over Everton Football Club um, and for 777 to acquire Farhad Mashiri's 94.1% stake of the football club, meaning Farhad Mashiri would be moved on, which is one of the problems already. You know, we, we all know one of the biggest problems is Farhad Mashiri and we know he needs moving on. However, as I said the other day, you know, are we in a position at the moment where it's always, it's almost as if like, well, is the grass greener? Well, seemingly it doesn't seem so with 777. Um, and although I think a lot of us will adopt that, well, it can't get much worse than Machiri, unfortunately, it can get much worse than Machiri. And as I said, as I've said before, and I will say it again, administration is not beyond the realms of possibility for this football club. We have seen much bigger football clubs, football clubs that make much more money, football clubs that uh, commercially are, are much bigger than Everton, who have been minutes away from going into administration over the past. So it isn't, you know, it, it isn't a, a, a beyond the realms of possibility thing for Everton football clubs to go into administration. I'm not saying it will happen, but what I'm saying is that is... The worst, isn't it? Well, it can't get much worse. Well, actually, it can get much worse. Uh, the Esk actually put out an interesting tweet after the news was um, after the news was put out. He said, regarding today's announcement of an agreement between Machiri and 777, I stand by my assessment that 777 do not have the resources to successfully acquire the club, nor will they get support of all the parties that are required to give that support. So the Esk is basically saying that. Not only have seven 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 not got the resources to um to acquire the football club, uh, but also the support that they would need in order to acquire the football club they won't get. So, again, hinting towards a situation where although a deal has been agreed, although a announcement has been made about a deal being agreed it still might come to a point where this ultimately doesn't come of anything. One thing that is massively significant about this bit of news and information today is that we now know exactly where Farhad Mashiri stands. Farhad Mashiri has flirted with the need for investment at this football club for a year or so now. He's done a couple of interviews where he said, oh, well, we're looking for investment in this, that, and the other. But also, within those interviews, and I think he forgets this, clearly because of the, the statement he's written this morning. But within those interviews, he has said, whilst we're looking for investment, I am still 100% committed to this football club. I want to take this football club forward. This is my football club. I'm an Evertonian. I'm a custodian, etc., etc. But I just want some investment. 
Well, the mask has slipped this morning, hasn't it? And Farhad Mashiri has quite clearly shown that he does not want to be a part of this football club anymore. He wants to sell the football club. Uh, his, his heart isn't in it. Now, in terms of going forward with the football club, and he very clearly is finished now. I, 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 I analysed it a couple of days ago as, as, as a kid getting a new toy for Christmas, and then after a few months being bored of it and just putting it down. And that's ultimately what Farhad Mashiri has done with Everton. He's picked us up, he's played with us for a few years, and now he's bored of us, so he's putting us down and he's moving on. And what that means and why that is really important is because <clears throat> if the 777 stuff does break down for whatever reason, whether it be the Financial Conduct Authority saying, nope, that's not happening, whether it be the Premier League saying, no, that's not happening, or whether it just be those finances that need to back this sort of walk away and say no we're not involved whatever reason it might be if this 777 uh, takeover deal does fall through then we know where Farhad Mashiri stands Farhad Mashiri then can't come back with his tail between his legs and do another interview saying I am fully committed to Everton Football Club I am this I am that apparently he's talking with TalkSport now which is interesting because we all know that's where he, he loves to go. He loves to go to talks, but doesn't he? he won't do a sit-down interview where he actually talks to us face-to-face through a camera, but he'll go on and talk to Jim White and Simon Jordan of a morning. He's, he's an absolute fool. The fella's an absolute fool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like I said, he has not got the opportunity now <clears throat> to come back with his tail between his legs and sort of say, oh, well, you, you know, I, I, I didn't uh, I didn't actually want to sell Everton. Uh, <clears throat> it was just that, uh, it, 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 you know, it, I just wanted investment. He can't do that. He can't do that because he's clearly put out there now that his intention is to sell this football club. That's what he wants to do. That's what he's trying to do. And that's what he's agreed to do. So even if this doesn't happen <clears throat> for whatever reason, we now have a little bit more clarity. We already knew anyway. We already knew deep down that Farhad Mashiri uh, wanted to sell a football club. But now we've got confirmation from the horse's mouth that this is what he wants to do. This is his objective. This ultimately is is his um, is 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 his goal. And now that means that if it doesn't fall through with seven seven seven, then obviously he will sell a football club anyway. If it does fall through, then he will automatically have to go and find another buyer because he's made it he's made it quite clear now he doesn't want to be here. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to clear up a couple of things in the comments. Trevor says it will happen now. We wouldn't get a club statement. If not, that's not necessarily true. Um the club statement says that there's an agreement in place to sell a football club to 777 and Farhad Mashiri has agreed to sell his stake with 777. Selling a Premier League football club is not as easy as just meeting someone in your local Starbucks, shaking their hand and saying, yeah, okay, I'll sell to you, brilliant, fine, I now own that football club, boss. It's not as easy as that, it's got to get uh, approval from various different places and people, as we've said, the FA, the Premier League, the, the FCA, Financial Conduct Authority, for those that don't know what that means. Um... And if any of them turn around and say, nope, we're not giving our approval, we don't believe that this is, ha- we don't believe that this should happen, we don't believe that the funds are there, we don't believe that these are the right people to take this football club forward, uh, then it won't happen. And all that will happen is a statement that will will probably be made, um, well, with Everton, you never know if a statement's going to be made, but a statement will likely to be made saying uh, the, the takeover has fallen through because of XXX have rejected the, uh, you know, have, have not given their approval. So we will now look for further investment with somebody else. And that was what will happen. It just because the announcement of a deal being agreed has been announced does not mean that the takeover will be completed. Um you know that there's a lot of work that has to be go that has to go on. There's a lot of things that have to be agreed. There's a lot of forms that have to be signed. There's a lot of boxes that have to be ticked before you know it is confirmed that they have uh, you know that 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 they have the permission to 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 buy Everton Football Club from Farhad Mashiri. So yeah, we will. Um, we will wait and see. I mean, Claire makes a really, really good point here. Claire says Hicks and Gillette didn't have the money to buy Liverpool, but it went through, and we would, and with day one, we sorry, and they were one day away from going into administration. They borrowed a lot of money against the club. Be careful for what you wish for. Exactly, exactly, Claire, and you're spot on. And that <clears throat> is what I'm referring to. Liverpool were multi time, and I know we don't like talking about Liverpool, but please just listen for the moment. Liverpool were multi time Champions League winners. 
when Hicks and Gillette taken over. They were multi-time league winners. They were, I believe at the time, the most successful football club in England and certainly one of the most successful football clubs in the world. And they were hours, and I mean hours, away from administration because of what Hicks and Gillette did to them when they come in and because they didn't have the funds. The Premier League allowed that to happen. The FCA allowed that to happen. The FA allowed that to happen. And they were they were bailed out by the Royal Bank of Scotland. The Royal Bank of Scotland bailed them out, loaned them a ridiculously huge amount of money, and they then obviously paid that back over the years, and they ended up being okay. But if it wasn't for the Royal Bank of Scotland, Liverpool Football Club mightn't even exist to this date, uh, or, or they certainly wouldn't have existed in the capacity that they do now. So that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> You're never too big to 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 you know to be in a position where your company has to cease to exist because of the gross mismanagement of it. And we know there has been a massive, massive gross mismanagement of Everton Football Club during Farhad Mashiri's tenure. And that that simply cannot be argued. It is the truth. It is the absolute nailed on truth and it cannot be argued. <coughs> so yeah, I suppose we, we wait and see. Um like I said, is this worrying for me? Well, yeah, it is slightly worrying because um, I share everybody's concerns about 777. I don't think 777 are the right people to take this football club forward. I don't think 77 have got the uh, 777 have got the funds or the um, the tools to take this club forward. Despite Farhad Mashiri stating that they they do have that, I, I don't believe that to be the case. Um, um. You only have to look at some of the football clubs that 777 have got involvement in now and ask their fans personally how they feel about their ownership of their football club. And a lot of those fans, not all, because I can't speak on behalf of all, but a lot of those fans will say that they aren't happy with the way in which their football club is being run, which would, would tell you that um, <clears throat> that ultimately the, 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 um, the owners are, are, are not really the type of people you want running your football club. But... There you go. I, I, I mean, listen, I'm, I, again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I am only reporting on the information that is out there and I'm only giving my opinion on the information that is out there. So for people saying, why don't you look on the positive side, Cam? Why don't you ever talk about things positively? Well, I suppose the positive of this is that Farhad Mashiri will be leaving the football club and we will no longer have to deal with Farhad Mashiri, Farhad Mashiri's way of doing things, Farhad Mashiri's way of working, which has put Everton in this position now, you know, of how badly he's run this football club for seven years. We likely will not have to deal with uh, Bill Kenwright as well. So I suppose the big positive is we will, you know, we will get rid of the two people that ultimately we've, we've been... Um, trying to move on from the football club for a number of months now. <clears throat> However, who are we replacing them with? And that is the big question. A lot of question marks around 777, and there's ultimately a lot of question marks as to whether or not 777 will be good enough. And it's those question marks, it's those unanswered questions that, that give you the worry and the anxiety. <clears throat> but as of now, it looks like this will will head towards the Premier League, head towards the FCA for approval, and and the next step is I'm sure we will sit here and wait for a number of months without being told anything. <coughs> Again, perfect time to do this. By the way, then you know two nights before a massive game of football for the football club, let's announce a takeover deal with a group of people that the fans already don't want to see come into the football club. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we will now go two, three months without hearing a single thing and then a decision will ultimately be made and, and, and we will hear about that. I dare say if it is a good decision in terms of, well, a good decision for them in terms of it is being agreed, then the club will release a statement. And if it's a bad decision for them and it's not agreed for whatever reason, I dare say we probably won't hear nothing and it'll just be a report in, in, in a newspaper that it's fallen through. So we ultimately... We'll um, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. And for James, James says it's not going to fall through. It's signed and sealed, delivered. This has got nothing to do with Everton. <clears throat> this has got nothing to do with seven seven seven. When I say fall through, I don't mean Everton are going to turn around and go. Now nah, we're not interested anymore. Or seven 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 are going to turn around and go. Now nah, we're not interested anymore. Everton. <clears throat> let me make this absolutely abundantly clear. Everton and seven 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 partners now have no say in the decision that is made by the FCA, by the Premier League, and by the FA. 
<clears throat> this could still not happen. Because any one of those organisations could turn around and say, no, we do not deem this takeover appropriate. We do not believe 7-7 Seven Seven have got the funds or the resources to be able to fund this football club successfully. And therefore, we are not going to allow this to happen under our rules. And that would have nothing to do with Everton or 777. So just because an agreement has been made doesn't mean that 777 will be the owners of New Everton. There is a big, big, big chance that they will be the new owners of Everton Football Club. <clears throat> but it doesn't mean that it's confirmed. And James says, don't you think they would have went through the pen first? They would have probably <clears throat> had guidance from the Premier League. Or they would have would probably, you know, have known the... Um, the Premier League's, you know, the, the Premier League's uh, sort of rules and regulations on takeovers of football clubs. But ultimately, if, if this goes to the Financial Conduct Authority and they say to 777, OK, Everton's new stadium is, let's say, £300 million away from completion. Show us that £300 million now. Show us where it is. Show us that you've got it. And show us that you've got that there solely for the stadium. And if seven 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 go well, well here it is. We're, we're actually going to make that seven seven. Uh, we're actually going to make that three hundred million pound from various different investors. And then the FCA go to one of these investors, and those investors go, "No, we're not backing it, mate." Then it falls through, doesn't it? And I know again, like I said, if you were to get, if you were to ask me now, percentage wise, what percentage do I think this is likely to go through? You know, on a scale of one to a hundred. The percentage of likelihood that this will go through, what would I say? I would probably now be in towards the high 60s, early 70s, because it's been agreed. Now, the deal has been agreed, and as I said, you're probably right, James, there probably is an element of this that wouldn't have got to this stage if the football club and 777 didn't have some sort of inkling that it would be agreed. I agree with you 100%, but it still doesn't mean it will be confirmed, and there is still, as I said, boxes to be ticked. There is still, you know contracts to be signed and there is still opportunities for people to step in and go actually no this this isn't um this isn't this isn't right this <clears throat> but as i said we probably won't hear about that or find out about anything about that until you know towards the end of of, of the year a month two months maybe three months we'll, we'll hear an update on that um we'll wait and see seven 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 uh their account on twitter which only has 284 followers they have tweeted, welcome Everton fans with a picture of um, fans at Goodison. So, yeah, there you go. They're obviously supremely confident that this will go through. I'm sure Farhad Mashiri is confident that this will go through. And I'm not saying it won't go through, by the way. I've just said I'm late 60s, early 70% sure that this will happen. But what I'm saying is it's not 100% confirmed yet. Um, if it does go through and it does happen, then we just have to hope that 777 aren't anywhere near as, as, as good, um, you know, as, 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 sorry, that 777 aren't anywhere near as bad as what certain people have made out on the internet. Charlie says, anyone is entitled to become an Everton fan, Cam, young or old, will end up with no new fans if you had your way. What are you on about, mate? What are you on about? I've not ever once said that you, you're not entitled to become an Everton fan. What I've said is Farhad Mashiri isn't an Everton fan. Nothing to do with his age. I'm not asked about his age. I'm asked about his actions. The actions of Farhad Mashiri are not one of a fan of a football club, are they? I'm not asked about his age or where he's from or when he comes to the football club. Bloody hell, Tim Howard's a huge Everton fan. Huge. And he didn't come to the football club till his late 20s. You know, when he's an American-born, uh, you, you know, footballer. Stop trying to make something out of something that it isn't. It's, it's bollocks. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. It'll be interesting to see how fans respond to this now. It will because, obviously, we, we've seen a few tweets over the last few weeks or so of hashtag no to 777 and things like that. So, it'll be um, it'll be interesting now to see how Evertonians sort of respond to, to this news and, 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 and certainly how they respond on Sunday to the news um obviously i won't be there on sunday because i have a arrangement i'm going to see busted in leeds uh, which was obviously arranged for the sunday when actually the game was meant to be on the saturday but the game was changed brilliant um so yeah i, I won't be there but i'll definitely be watching and i'll definitely be seeing if there's uh if, if there's anything in the stadium surrounding 777 in terms of any noise or <clears throat> you know a a again i don't think there'll be protests because 
you know, this is obviously in its massively early stages, but you know, there is concerns about this and, and there is massive concerns from us as fans and there is massive concerns from the global sort of wider media as well who uh, know, you know, the ins and outs of what 777, uh, their involvement in other football clubs and they're very clearly a little bit concerned about um, how they will run Everton if, if, if they get in. So, look, we'll wait and see the news today and the breaking news for today is that Farhad Mashiri has agreed to sell his stake of 94.1% of his shares to 777 partners. Um, Obviously, that is subject to approval from uh, the Financial Conduct Authority, the Premier League and the Football Association. Um, The club have said that closing of this transaction is expected to occur in the fourth quarter of 2023. So, yeah, let's... uh, Let's wait and see how this one pans out. But yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and say this is terrible <clears throat> or this is great because the reality is we don't know what this is, and and this is the reality of football takeovers. We don't know whether they're going to be the best thing to ever happen to us or the worst thing. That, you know, we could be sitting here now saying, "Oh no, seven 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 are awful. They've done this. They've done that." And he might come in and just be boss for us. He might say, "Do you know what? Forget everything that's happened there. This is our main football club. We will be the biggest football club they own." Seville. Maybe is his argument, you know, is arguable, but will certainly be one of the biggest football clubs they own. So they should be putting all of their energy into Everton. And we might be sitting there in three years, going, "Oh my God, no Machiri, no Ken Wright. We've won an FA Cup. We're good in the league. This is great." Or we could be sitting here without a football club, and we could be sitting here talking about what we've had for our tea and what our favourite video game is because Everton don't exist anymore. We don't know what what will happen. We don't know what's likely to happen. <clears throat> we've got an inkling. <clears throat> of what could happen because of previous <coughs> pardon me because of previous evidence of their involvement with other football clubs but you know every case is different and ultimately as i said this is slightly concerning but we'll wait and see what happens over the next coming months so there you go that's the latest let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you have enjoyed this video please please do leave a like 226 people watching i'm going to assume that a number of those people watching aren't subscribed so if you are watching now and you aren't subscribed please hit that subscribe button it would mean a massive massive amount to me it only takes a second it's free it literally doesn't cause you any inconvenience if you have enjoyed this leave a like by the way again 226 people watching 59 likes could we get those likes up that'd be great um <clears throat> we'll be back later today with the game preview to our Premier League fixture against Arsenal on Sunday, so don't forget to look out for that one. Um, and yeah, as I said, please hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you've enjoyed it, and let me know your thoughts. I want to know your thoughts on the takeover. Are you happy about it? Are you not happy about it? Are you worried? Are you concerned? Are you just happy to see the back of Farhad Mashiri? Or do you think that this will fall through because of the, the concerns? Are you, are you not worried about this whatsoever? Let us know your thoughts. Leave a like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you later.